Hello friends from Mobile Geeks. Uh, we are back again at the booth from ZF uh, because there is so much to show here and there are so much people to talk to and I'm very, very happy that I can have an interview with Dr. Dirk Wallace. He is the head of R&D of ZF Global. Uh, good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, yeah, you are the head of R&D, which means research and development uh, for ZF. And you are responsible for all the stuff that you're going to see here at the booth uh, and, and even more. So is it, is it easy or could you describe your job like in one sentence? Uh, first of all, it's, a, it's an honor uh, that you phrase me like that. Of course, what you see here is a joint effort of all the divisions. So we have divisional development departments that do the component and product development. And in corporate R&D, we're looking for all the synergies, technologies that everybody needs and after all for system level products and technologies. So what I do every day is ask myself, is this the right product? Do, are we looking at the right technology still? And what is in the forefront that we should catch up with and include? So it changed a lot in, in the last 10 years, I think, because digitalization, uh, e-mobility, all these are things that are new to the automotive world. Uh, how did you, or how is it, or how important is it to, to Uh, attack those new um, fields of experience and, and, and how important is it that, that ZF um, is uh, mastering these for the OEMs? Well, there's three pieces to the, to the success story. One is that we have a very sound and uh, state-of-the-art and leading-edge technology base with what ZF has traditionally been doing. So around uh, transmissions, axles, brakes and so on, with all the electronics that you need, with the software that more and more was needed, we have a very strong base to start with. That's, that's one very important ingredient. The second one is to consistently and con to continuously partner. So we're looking at the technology leaders, talk to them and include them. And you see some examples here where we work yeah. with NVIDIA, for example. We have all be, always been working mobile. So we go in partnerships, develop the next step together. And the third piece is based on our scenarios where we see CO2, where we see electrification and so on, we look at all the technologies that we may need in order to change the systems and the world. And those are the technologies that we're investing ourselves. And you mentioned one digitalization. We opened up our uh, IE test center, IE lab in Saarbrücken, in Friedrichshafen and other locations because we see a lot of potential using that technology for all our products. How or what can AI, AI change for, for the automotive world? This is just, when, when we talk about artificial intelligence, most are thinking, okay, this is about autonomous driving, but there is more behind. Yeah, something else straightforward. We wouldn't have any perception algorithms without AI. That's impossible. So working like the human eye, having neural networks, but also more advanced uh, systems is very important. But that's only one piece. Another piece is using in, 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 the, in the plants. When we see data and signatures in the end-of-line test, we can very proactively change the, the, the steps before the end-of-line test to reduce crap rates. So I would say that the technology is almost there. Machine learning algorithms are available. It's now the next phase where we have to bring it to the components, into our processes and in new technologies. And that means also learning about how to uh, develop those things and also how to integrate those. I mean, we have here in the back uh, the systems that you use for autonomous driving and they're getting smaller and smaller. So if I see the, the level level four and level five, you see that, that there, is, there is development and there is something is happening. Um, how long does it take you to make those steps? Well, for those particular ones, uh, we had a dream team because from the first idea, to then having the first prototypes, and now the, the family to see here was less than two years. Oh, wow. Um, now, now, of course, we're in a phase where we know they work, they, they perform what we need, what we want. Sometimes may, they may even be over-engineered, so we have to look at level two or level four or level mm -hmm. five uh, autonomous driving, but it works. Now we have to bring into the vehicles, and the Ego uh, will be one of the first uh, uh, volume or uh, production vehicles where we use the technology. The Ego is a new developed car. It's a new developed car that we're trying to develop and where we provide all the technology, sensor set, and, and also the, the trajectory execution algorithm, so how the vehicle actually drives yeah. at the end. So another thing that everybody's talking about, of course, is e-mobility. And you are developing different parts for e-mobility for different OEMs. 
Uh, where are you standing now at the moment, for example, in terms of um, develop for engines? Well, as you know, we are, we are supplying our e-axle already to different customers, one of which is the EQ family. Um, and, and we're at a status where we have ranges and efficiency where we're already quite, uh, uh, quite satisfied. But of course, as head of corporate R&D, I'm looking for more efficiency, more range or less batter batteries. So we look at all technologies from semiconductors, power electronics, to running the electric engine differently so that we can get more and more uh, efficiency. And I'm quite confident we haven't seen the end of the story yet. One thing you, you just named it is range. Everybody is talking about range and range anxiety. And, and is it like, do you see like batteries coming up or efficient electric drives coming up that could make up to 700 kilometers or something like that? Well, I personally think that's not necessary at the moment. Um, because if you have a range of 400 kilometers, I'm, I was running a, a petrol gas engine. Yeah and you have, don't have more than 400 kilometers with a petrol, petrol gas engine and gasoline, uh, depending also on your driving style. So 400 to 500 kilometers is fine. Uh, it's more a matter of, is the environment, is the infrastructure there that I can freely charge vehicles? And I think that the next challenge is not a yet better battery, which is also good, of course, but to get the infrastructure in place that the, the range anxiety cools down. If, you, if today you go in yeah. the inner city, there's one charging station, two electric vehicles can charge, mostly they're occupied by non-electric vehicles. So if you rely on it, it, it may be tough to get out of the inner city. So here I think is the next biggest step. And then of course, after that, when we have an infrastructure in place, then the battery improvement will, will again play an important role. We talked a bit before we started the interview also about fuel cell. Uh, we were both a bit like, surprised that at this year at the uh, trade show here there is no um, there is no fuel cell to see is it is it because the fuel cell is dead or is the fuel cell still an option for uh, for example in our um, uh, tier one suppliers like ZF yeah the one merit or one advantage of being uh, head of corporate R&D is that I can look at things very specifically and yeah. individually in public discussion, we already talk about what is the right technology. Yeah. Of course, it would be nice if we had one. There is no one technology. So if I compare, for example, just the public traffic, uh, where you want to have one car that you run in your daily commuting, that you ra run on vacation, where you have ranges up to 800 kilometers and 10 kilometers per day, there, of course, we have a broad range. And, and not one technology is the right technology for that. We believe also, uh, in, in view of the missing infrastructure, that for a long time, a plug-in hybrid like the EV Plus, that has a range of 100, kilo, a solid range of 100 kilometers, and has an, a range extender, so yeah. to speak, for longer, will be a very good solution. Um, when you talk about fuel cell, there's also other transportation means like long haul traffic. Yeah. So if, if we equipped a, a heavy duty truck, a class A truck, with a, with a battery, we would add a minimum of 10 tons just by battery weight. Yeah, right. Well, as you know, the, the, the um, transportation companies, what they need is, is load. Yeah. So if they, if they ha have 10 tons less load, the business case is gone. So the battery is not an option for there. There we may see fuel cells. Fuel cells are lighter, can be charged. Uh, they are regenerative with the regenerative hydrogen. So that may be a very good option. And if you look at even longer, traffic scenarios or transportation scenarios like ships, tankers, for example. Here I think that we also see some sin fuels at the end of the line and, and for, for um, air traffic as well. So there will be a mixture of energy sources and a mixture of, uh, of different um, propulsion means in the future. We are standing uh, at a, what you call, people mover. You see a lot of stuff that, that uh, ZF is developing for it. Also, full and radar, lighter, and other stuff. Um, autonomous driving is like a bit of a dream. We're talking about it since like 60, 70 years about. Uh, do you think that now we are really there where we can have autonomous driving, like level four to five? Let me be a little provocative. I would say it's already there. Oh. And there's two aspects. One is how do we travel in inner cities like Shanghai or Kuala Lumpur? Uh, what you have is your smartphone and, and ride hailing is what you do, even with taxis. So having a transportation means where you have uh, um, um, 
mobility as a service, mobility per pay, pay per mobility is a fact. I think we have about 50 million ride hails per day already in the world. Yeah. That's one piece. The other piece is, uh, if you look at, at our partners uh, to get there, they have been running autonomous vehicles for quite some time. Millions of uh, experienced kilom kilometers and miles uh, we have done already. And it's a very easy autonomous driving because we rely on magnetic dots on the road. It's very efficient, it's very reliable, and it's uh, very inexpensive for, for inner cities, mega cities like Paris, for example, or Brussels, to install it. The, 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 the range, the, the sticker price of those infrastructure dots is about $3,000 per kilometer, which is nothing. So, uh, on the one hand, it's already there. And the, the sensor set that you see is already there because uh, uh, these to get the shuttles need to mm. see passengers, need to see pedestrians, need to see crossings and so on. That's one side. The other side is if you look at the sheer business case, it's so intriguing. Yeah. Uh, as you know, in taxis or uh, in, in, in long haul transportation, the driver is the, the cost driver. One thing, the other one, we don't find them anymore. Yeah. So if you want to look for experienced drivers uh, for, for class A trucks, uh, uh, um, hard to find, I hard know. To, hard I know, to find. Know. So there's also opportunities where autonomous driving in a restricted areas will bring a lot of benefit to transportation. And last but not least, if you look at the inner city traffic, and I think Munich did a study on that, suppose you had only autonomous vehicles in the inner cities, you would have a cycle time of less than five minutes. And in order to have that with public transportation, you would have to spend billions of dollars to get a cycle time everywhere of less than five minutes. So there's also benefit of having good mobility, fluent mobility in inner cities uh, on the one hand side and auto autonomous traffic on the other hand side. So you really believe that we could have like autonomous driving in cities in the next two or three years? In restricted areas. Well, there's, yeah. there's, there's already tests out there in, for example, San Francisco. Yeah. If you go to a typical traffic uh, crossing in San Francisco, you wait for less than two minutes and you get at least one, uh, one of these shuttles in test yeah. phase. We are covering, I would say, 95% of all the transportation tasks. There's still a challenge if you have snow, if you have fog, yeah. and you still need a security driver. So I think we will, for quite a long time, still see security, security drivers because nobody wants to have an initial accident by, by such a vehicle. So it's a transition time, um, but when you have a restricted lane and, and cities think about restricted lanes, it's much easier, you can restrict it, you could even have barriers in between. Yeah. So the risk is much smaller and the transition goes faster. Did you try it out for yourself? I did. Autonomous driving? Did, yes. Not, be, not afraid? No, no. I mean, I'm, I'm driving automatic cruise control for a lot of years. Yeah. And it's the same at the beginning. You always have your hands on the steering wheel. Yeah, you always have to yeah, put yeah, the exactly, brake. Yeah. But when you do it for, say, two days, a week, you drove a thousand kilometers, you see it works, and whenever there's a, there's a change, lane change, it does it, you start not as much relying on your hands as the automotive yeah, yeah, exactly. So this trust building, and, and it's a very good point you to raise in trust building. I think that's one major topic we have to look at when we talk about these autonomous vehicles. Mm -hmm. How can you build trust with a passenger that doesn't know the vehicle? There's no driver, you kind of look at him, does the driver look gently, is it a nice guy, is it a defensive or more uh, aggressive driver, you don't know it. So the trust building for autonomous vehicles will be one very important ingredient. You also, I mean, ZF is a, is a T1 supplier that is mostly known for de uh, developing parts and delivering parts to OEMs like the big uh, car companies. Is this um, now we have new companies like Google, Apple, there's a lot of companies like pushing onto the market. Um, is it a challenge for ZF that you have like more other companies or is it also like a chance to sell a bit more of your components to other companies? For us it's a big opportunity because what those tech companies have been doing, they've, the chain, they've changed the way how we de develop for example. So we are working with, uh, with quite a few of them together, yeah. how we do DevOps in software development, how to be faster and so on. So I would see it as a challenge because they paved the way for new technologies that now we can use. Using those technologies for automotive is another story. Nobody can do it alone. So yeah. that's where our role comes in. Uh, 
knowing how a break works, what are the, the, uh, the, the, the limiting factors of a break is very important when you set up a software for a break. Yeah. That's something we put into the party. And putting those components together, that we not just have a brake or a steering, that we have a full chassis where you can say, well, run this way, can you do this path, can you do this trajectory? Yeah. And our system says, yes, I can, and we'll do it. That's a, a new system quality of products that we're looking for. Software is one thing. I mean, classical R&D is like developing parts, like parts that you can touch or that you can put in a car. But software is now a very, uh, important part of the of the whole R&D stuff. How did Setup change their approach in terms of like getting software engineers and building up a, you talked about building up the own, your own AI uh, headquarters in Saarbrücken and in mm. and Friedrichshain. How, how important is it for Setup like getting these talents into the company and being a software company? It is important I mean, to, to have software talent that know about cars that know about mobility yeah. systems is very important. On the other hand, we have been learning to develop software for quite some years. In the last 10 years, software content of components of ECUs and cars have increased. Also, our customers uh, have challenged us in adopting new technologies. So, writing software that is SPICE compliant, writing software that is functional safety compliant, and writing software that can be continuously developed and changed and delivered is something we learned with our customers. Now it's the next step that we start developing software purely, just as software, and put it into our components, or as we saw before in the high yeah. performance computers, which pave the way for independent development of software, just like in uh, uh, computational centers or PCs. Is it hard to get those uh, engineers in Germany? Because everybody thinks their talent is going to Google or Facebook or whatever. Is, is it hard to like convince them go to Saarbrücken or go to Friedrichshafen? Well, I've been with ZF for a year, and it's uh, it's not hard because ZF is a very attractive employer. And when when we approach people or when we have postings, we get a lot of positive response. So of course our heritage, our uh, brand helps a lot of attracting people. And working in autonomous, autonomous driving, as we do, as yeah. you can see here, or in, in, in new mobility concepts, or in the, in the electric mobility change, is very attractive. And ZF provides it all. ZF provides all, as you said. Um, what are, when you look a bit forward in the next two years, what are the main challenges for you in the R&D section? Well, uh, I mentioned before that there's a lot of technologies out there. I just want to mention LiDAR, for example. Yeah. There's a lot of different concepts in place. Which is a laser-based Which is sensor. a laser-based sensor where you can both see, uh, have a 3D image and can also uh, find out about the velocity of, uh, um, of vehicles. Um, it, we, we cannot be as precise and as deeply involved in all technologies. So at some point we have to make judgment calls based on our strategy and say, well, let's follow up this one or the other one. For example, we said we will not uh, invest in battery cell technology or uh, in a fuel cell. We, we revise these decisions every now and then. But of yeah, course we, we have to make our judgment call yeah. and, and keep concentrating on the most important technologies. Digitalization is an enabler and uh, in, uh, artificial intelligence as well, we will keep on investing and hiring people and good talent over again. So, uh, you think that, that for the future, uh, for ZF, it, it looks good and, and you are like well uh, in, in all in aspects of your, of your business part. Um, but personally, what are you looking mostly forward? Uh, in terms of technical development, is it autonomous driving or is it, is it maybe something else we never have heard of? It's the vision of really cutting down zero to, to zero, for example. Yeah. And from the technology side, we know it, it works. Yeah, we, we have enough energy that comes from the sun. We have a lot of means of producing hydrogen by electrolysis. So if you do the overall back of the energy calculation, it works. So it drives me to get it to the real world. And it's a, as you know, it, it requires uh, companies, it requires uh, technicians, but it also requires our society, it requir requires politicians to all get moving and pulling at the, at the same string. And that drives me to get CO2 to zero. And the other one is uh, to get the, the amount of uh, uh, fatalities in the traffic yeah. down to zero. And as a, as a technology uh, guy, you know it's, it's possible. There's only two things, we have to have the infrastructure and we have to make the cost so that it's really a product. So 
So that drives me every day. And I'm looking what can we change in order to be faster achieving that goal. So thank you very much at this point. So this, dear friends from Mobile Geeks, was very interesting to hear what's going on at ZF. And it was really interesting to hear from the head of the R&D what they are developing at the moment. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the interview. Yeah, and we see us. Uh, and oh no, before I forget, have a look to the other video we made uh, with ZF. There you can hear a lot about e-mobility. So look down, we have a link for that for you. And we're going to see you next time. Have a good time. Bye.